Hi, I'm Rich Gallicini. And I'm Hugh Sung. And welcome to the Cunningham Piano video blog. Hugh? Rich? We've got a lot of great questions. I chose one this week I'm excited about. Cool. We always get great Thanks. questions. Thank you so much. And be sure to keep them coming. So the question this week is, what is rebuilding a piano? What is rebuilding a piano? Okay, what well, does that mean? What does that mean? And right. why rebuild a piano? All right. Well, let's, let's tackle Double. what is rebuilding a piano. Sounds like uh, you're we're dealing with older instruments, right? Okay. Most and, of the time, yes. Oh. So tell us, what, is, what, what goes into rebuilding a piano? Sure. OK. So unlike a violin, unlike a trombone, unlike many other mm -hmm. instruments, a piano has many tons of tension on it. There's over 200 strings of high tensile steel and copper wound strings and they're being stretched to a huge tension. Mm -hmm. So this poor soundboard has strings pressing down on it. Now let's, let's just back up a little bit. Okay. So uh, first let's talk about the major components of what makes the piano sound. We talk about violin, obviously the strings, are, there's the vibration for the bow against the strings and the little box that the sound, the violin essentially is amplifying the sound of those strings. Sure, sure. A brass instrument. Mm -hmm. I just interviewed Carol Yanch for my podcast show. It was very, very Carol cool. Carol is very cool. She's Carol Yanch, excuse me, I mispronounced her name. But interestingly, the sound is from the buzzing of the lips, and her tuba or any brass instrument is just an amplifier of the buzzing here. The piano, I guess, in many ways, has some similar principles where we're having strings vibrate, mm -hmm. but they're being amplified. Can you tell, talk about the amplification? So basically, Absolutely. there's a hammer that hits the string, mm -hmm. the string vibrates, then what? Right. The bridge, the sound doesn't go through air. So air is a, not a great transducer, mover of the vibrations. Okay. So the string goes over a bridge, just like it does on a violin or a guitar. It's those bridges that move the vibrations into the soundboard, mm -hmm. and the soundboard of the piano amplifies the sound of those strings. So the, the, the bridge connects the vibrations of the strings Absolutely. through and then to the, the larger piece of wood, which then vibrates and amplifies the strings vibrating. Now here's the problem. Okay. The soundboard has to vibrate freely. Yeah. So we want a light wood, but a strong wood. And it can't be very thick, otherwise it won't vibrate. Right. Okay. So the solution there is support it with ribs behind the soundboard. Okay. Another solution is have a thicker bridge that helps to mold the crown. Mm -hmm. But over time, over many, many years, we've got strings pressing down. We have changes in humidity and temperature where the soundboard will expand and contract. And it starts to fail. Yeah. So we know that this will happen as the soundboard ages. Now, as opposed to violins or mm -hmm. brass instruments, which can last hundreds of years. Absolutely. Right? But yes. they don't have as many they don't have as many moving parts. They don't have much tension. As much tension. That's right. Okay, there we go. Right. Yeah. Now when we talk about a violinist, violinists do not last for hundreds of years. <laughs> These hands can only play a violin for so many decades and then they will wear out. <laughs> and even violins themselves and other mm -hmm. instruments, they have components that need to be replaced. Oh of course. Sure, of course. Sure, sure. But now here's the connection I'm trying to make. Okay. In a violin, we are the action. Mm -hmm. In a piano, we have thousands of moving parts made of wood, wearing felts, leathers, that bring our touch to the strings. Mm -hmm. So there's an action in there that wears. And these are all organic materials. And these are incredibly complex machines. I, as I've heard it's described, mm -hmm. each key is a machine that has a very sophisticated way of bringing a hammer to hit the strings. It's really That's right. Absolutely, absolutely. So these are all parts that we need to deal with. Um, in addition to that, we have finishing. So once we put all of this work internally in the piano, well, why not refinish it to make it look beautiful? That's what we've done here. And then the last thing is optimization. Take all of those parts and make them work together with the best efficiency for the best final result. So just to summarize, we've got the sound, mm -hmm. right? the sound components, yes. the soundboard itself. We have action. Mm -hmm. We also have finishing or the look or the cabinetry of the instrument. And then finally, the fourth component is optimization, getting those well, primarily the sound creating aspects to work best together. That's exactly Synchronizing right. them. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. So now why rebuild a piano? It takes months to do and many thousands of dollars worth of work. Well, I think there's really three reasons. One is the final result is going to be much finer for the money that you spend than a brand new piano. For instance, this 1912 Steinway B, and you'll get to hear this in a moment, I think it sounds better than some new Steinway Bs that I've sat down at. Hmm. What do you think? Well, here, here's an interesting question. Mm -hmm. You know, again, coming from having just bought a, a car for my son, uh, if I, you know, uh, I, I, I'm assuming a brand new car 
is better than an older car, right? But that's not necessarily the case with the piano, is it? I mean, or, that's or exactly can, true. Can that be? Are our new pianos always? We kind of addressed this question a few episodes ago, but I want to readdress it again. Sure. Because I think it's important to understand the differences. Because I think we think computers, the, the newest computer is always going to be the best computer. Your smartphone, you buy a smartphone, the newest smartphone will be the best smartphone. Well, right? let me respond to that, okay. and I think that's true. One thing that's different in pianos is that we're dealing with technologies that we've now been using for a century. I'm not saying that there are not companies doing new things. There certainly are. Sure. Um, the, the Yamaha CFX, for instance, is really a cool leap in a new piano, yes? Right. But designs that have been proven and have been around for a long time, they have changed maybe a little bit over mm -hmm. time, but not necessarily to be better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you deal with all of these components that we're dealing with, especially optimization, and each piano is handmade, you can get instruments that are just not as good as others, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So the possibility of rebuilding is that, for instance, this instrument, uh, the work that we did to it cost less than half of what this piano sells for brand new, which is close to $100,000. Wow. Right? Wow. Okay. And also, this is a 1912 Steinway. Yes, it is. And there's something to be said about older instruments. They each have their own character as well, which you just can't find in newer pianos. Again, not to say necessarily one's better than the other, but if you've fallen in love with an older piano sound mm -hmm. and you want to preserve that, that's something, that's something to pursue, to consider very seriously. Now, one thing to keep in mind. Sure. This piano mm -hmm. was rebuilt three years ago. By our, by, did we rebuild this piano? No, no, we ah, did not. Okay, okay, okay. So a gentleman who lives in Boulder, Colorado, okay. purchased this piano from a website. He saw a video, he saw pictures, and thought, wow, that looks great. Kind of like what we're doing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like what we're doing, yes. Okay. Um, he saw the pictures, he saw the video, and yeah. thought, well, it looks very nice, and the price is reasonable. Sure. He bought it and had it delivered. Okay. Right away, he knew something wasn't right. Mm. Um, and within a few months, he realized the piano wasn't really holding a tuning in certain places mm. that he thought it should. Mm -hmm. It didn't feel the way he thought it should. And when it was in person, the look of it wasn't all that great. Mm. So one of his technicians who came out to tune the piano suggested that he call Cunningham Piano Company. Mm. I had a conversation with him, left it at that, had more conversations, had emails back and forth. And at the end of the day, at the end of many months actually, uh, he decided to ship the piano to us to see if we could do anything about tuning stability. What we found was a lot more once mm. it got here. Mm -hmm. So remember, Every action has particular specifications, parts that are meant to make that action work beautifully. And it's not a matter of Steinway action or Bosendorfer action, because Bosendorfer or Steinway, the action designs and dimensions that they used in 1912 were a little different than the dimensions they used in 1985 sure. or 1990 mm -hmm. or 1960. So mm -hmm. we have to be very careful with that. The, the people who did the work for this piano used the wrong dimension parts. Ooh. Ouch. It will never feel great with kind of, those dimensional parts. Kind of like trying to put a, a Toyota transmission into a Ford or vice versa or something like that, right? It's nothing like that. But <laughs> I, I don't know. I, 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 I just play the piano. I'm not the mechanic. But, I, I, but something along those lines, you need to match the right specifications. Exactly. What we're talking about are things like a knuckle placement, which is a millimeter or two off. Yeah. All right. We're talking about very fine things, but things that will never allow this piano to play the way it was meant to. Mm -hmm. all right? mm -hmm. um, also, on the sound part, when we looked inside, we saw that the bridges, which have to have pins in an exact right place, they were not all the same. Mm -hmm. So it was impossible to get a great tuning mm -hmm. because of the way the bridges were installed. They were misaligned. That's exactly right. Okay. Now, the pin block was not carefully fit. It had, a pin block has to be fit so it's absolutely stable. Mm -hmm. It was not stable. Wow. These are these are pretty serious things, and all of these in one piano. So the piano is very much rushed. Actually, so it sounds like with this particular instrument, you hit almost all the major things we just talked about. The the action had problems, right? Yes. The sound, the soundboard, and the sound the sound amplification system had problems. Yes. Um, the, what else is there? Well, we wound up refinishing the piano too. <laughs> even the, even <laughs> the finish. Okay, what was wrong yeah. with the finish? Well, the finish. This is a hand rubbed finish, okay. which means that between each coat and at the end, you have this beautiful patina. Okay. It's a gorgeous finish, um, probably the most expensive finish to be done. Okay. Classy, yeah. classic, traditional. Uh, when it came in, the rub was not even. 
It wasn't even. It wasn't even straight. It was like you know somebody just kind of wiped around. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. That's exactly right. So our thir first thought was, um, okay, we'll re-rub the finish. Okay. But when we started to rub the finish, we literally rubbed through the finish. Ooh. There wasn't a lot of finish there to work with. Ooh. So he had no choice but to refinish it oh my. Or, or keep that. Yeah. Um, there were other issues that I don't even want to get into right sure, now. Sure. But bottom line is that this piano was rebuilt twice. Even after spending the money for our restoration. Sure. Uh, you know, sometimes if things seem too good to be true, yeah. they are. Yeah. So when he bought this piano, he saw a picture, he saw a video and thought, this is a good price. I'm going to buy this. I'm getting quite a deal. Mm. Well, he wound up putting substantially more money into the piano. But the final product is gorgeous. And it's interesting, too, because as you touched on the various components that were not properly addressed from mm -hmm. the beginning, right. that last part we talked about, too, optimization, really becomes impossible. It you, can't be you, done. You can't tune it because right. the, it, the, pa the piano basically, at its core, will not sustain a proper tuning. Right, you so the tuning, the tuning, the regulation, the, action, the voicing, the, the adjustment of the hammers, the feel. Mm -hmm. You're right. Optimization involves all of that, and it can't be done. And you need to have an instrument that has that already in place before the, even the optimization can be even considered. Exactly. Wow. But again, the good news is that even with the double work, so to speak, mm -hmm. he's still getting a much better deal, perhaps, than getting a brand new piano. would still have to spend a lot more money on an equivalent brand new modern Steinway. Design. That's true. Nice. That's absolutely true. Nice. And it's interesting too because this gentleman was in Colorado. We're in the Philadelphia area, but we get a lot of inquiries from around the country, around the world. That's true. To have pianos sent here. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's another question of who, how do you know where to send your pianos to? And this is part of the reason why we're doing this series of video blogs and articles so that you can get to know who we are and. Feel free to ask us questions if you don't understand or need to know more what's involved when you're considering your piano to be rebuilt. We're here for you and we want you to get to know us yes. and the artisans that work here at Cunningham. Yeah. Now I also want to say this, we are not the only rebuilder sure. who can do this work. Mm -hmm. But um, for instance, the gentleman who makes soundboards for us, uh, he, his father made soundboards at the Steinway factory for 20 years. Mm -hmm. He made soundboards there for 13 years mm -hmm. before he left and started working with us. The gentleman who did the action adjustment and regulation on this piano was one of the head action people at the Steinway factory for many years. We have people who have been in our employ that have worked at Busendorfer. We have people that have spent time in the Schimmel factory, people that have spent time in the Grotter and Steinweg factory in mm. Braunschweig. So we have a broad, a broad perspective of an experience. Mm. Um, that's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah that's great. So we've done a lot of talking now. <laughs> I would love for everybody to be able to hear this piano. Yeah, yeah. So let's, let's listen to see what you guys have done to bring this piano to its fully, uh, the best rebuilt shape that we, we know how to do. There you go. Hugh, that was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Well, listen, I, I, I'm really enjoying this piano. It's amazing. It doesn't feel like a quote-unquote rebuilt piano. It doesn't, sound, doesn't feel or sound like an old piano at all. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I was going to say, what do you mean doesn't feel like a rebuilt piano? I know what you mean. Yeah, it, it, you know, it's, it's interesting. With older pianos, you almost have an expectation that it's not going to be quite up to snuff, and there mm -hmm. are compromises. But... You know, there's no compromise with an instrument like this, and it's just, it's, it's magnificent. Did you feel any limits to your expressive capabilities on this instrument? Not at all, and that's what's Good. so surprising, too. It feels Wonderful. like I could do everything I want to with an instrument like this. And it's 1912. It's incredible. Yeah, and that's wonderful. really a, a great example 
of what great rebuilding does. It, it not just fixes things, but really, as we talked about, it optimizes it. But there's such an art to making a piano sing and realize its full potential. Well, our mission at Cunningham Piano Company is simple as this. Uh, we want to inspire pianists. Whether we're talking about a beautiful new piano, and there are beautiful new pianos out sure. there, or whether we're talking about a beautifully restored instrument like this, we want a pianist to sit down and feel like what's in their mind can come out of the keyboard. Yeah, absolutely. Right? It's and, really that simple. And I think, too, one of the things we're trying to do with our videos and articles is to educate you so that you understand the artisanship, the yeah. craftsmanship, what goes into all the components of pianos, new and old, and, of course, the great art of rebuilding. And again, one other quick thing I want to mention is the fact that this is an American craft. It's so wonderful to say that uh, piano rebuilding, the artisanship, is still here in America, here in Philadelphia, tradition since 1891. Wonderful to see that craftsmanship is still alive and well in this country. Something I'm very, very proud of. Well, thank you for taking the time to do this video with me, Hugh. Absolutely. And again, I want to invite you, if you enjoy these videos and articles, be sure to subscribe to our newsletter so that we can let you know whenever we have new videos and articles. We'd love to keep you in the loop. So for Cunningham Piano, I'm Hugh Sung. And I'm Rich Gallicini. Thank you so much for being with us today.